What's good with the YouTube of Convex Perspective? It's your boy Flacco coming live and direct with Senor Rojo. Man, I'm coming through, sliding through with a little bit of energy, man. And we got an interesting topic that we're going to be discussing, man. A, a news article that just came out um, where some Sureños filed a class action against the feds, actually, believe it or not. I mean, considering themselves businessmen. And what makes this case so interesting is some of the plaintiffs were part of a whole separate type of indictment that occurred in Contra Costa County that were North Daniels. There was two separate indictments, one with the Sudanios, I think it's Operation Blue Boulevard or something like that. And there was another one that was in regard to the North Daniels. And let's take this back, man. Um, since the end to all hostilities, right? ETAH with Todd Asker, you're seeing a trend now. You're seeing to where it's more of a convict mentality or inmate mentality seeking uh, justice, seeking rights, as opposed to being in opposition with each other they're, tr they're now coming together in, with, in common force together to take their plight and assert their rights. And, you know, years past, you would hear about indictments in the 70s to where BGF testified for Mexican Mafia members. But I'd say over the last 30, 40 years, right, Rojo, you, don't, you're not, you haven't seen what you're experiencing now. I would never think today you would see a group of North Daniels that would be plaintiffs in a, in a class action against the feds. Now, when we were locked up, incarcerated, we used to file class action 602s and all that, and it'd go to a certain extent, man. But this is the first time to where you see two oppositions who are at war on the streets, rivals, become plaintiffs in one law case. So I'm going to let Rojo discuss this article, and then we're going to break it down with our perspective, man. Like I said, whether you're active or inactive, right, whatever the, the organizational aspirations of these groups are, I mean, I get, I mean, I'm not, I'm not for crime or anything or, or the gang, gang element lifestyle, but I am about asserting your rights. I mean, so I think this is actually a good thing whenever you have common foes and to stop the killing and stop the violence and come together to assert your rights. I'm all for that. You know I mean, I, I personally think the end all hostilities and what's occurred there has actually been a good thing. There's been certain things, more violence as far as within people's own ranks and files, but there's going to be violence in prison regardless. So you're seeing a different trend now, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to each individual group fighting for their own rights, you're seeing other groups come together in a common plight. All right, man, this is courtesy of the East Bay Times, Oakland, California. Two accused gang members arrested in the 2020 federal investigation have filed a lawsuit suing the agencies that arrested and charged them. Naming as plaintiffs, more than three dozen people arrested in Bay Area gang sweeps since 2016. The lawsuit was filed by two men charged last year with federal law violations as part of a federal and state investigation targeting a Sereno gang subset. The suit names plaintiffs not only dozens of supposed Sereno gang members, but more than a dozen members from rival gang Norteños and associates who were arrested as part of the Concord Police FBI-led Operation Omega Red. The suit was handwritten by Luis Cruz, an inmate at the Martinez Detention Facility, who faces charges of conspiring to murder Eric Cruz, a 20-year-old man shot and killed in Concord in 2015, allegedly over a dispute involving a revolver. Luis Cruz's co-plaintiff, Brian Alvarenga, was charged with federal crimes. The suit says 15 suspected gang members arrested on federal charges of selling drugs and guns were really private salesmen who was selling private property, Cruz wrote. The charges are broad and vague as to the terms gang or street gang and therefore are unconstitutional. The suit, which was filed on July 16th, names as defendants the Concord Police, the U.S. Attorney's Office, a federal special agent, and Contra Costa County. A federal magistrate has not yet ruled on whether it passes the most basic hurdle but the suit appears to be a long shot. Cruz failed to fulfill basic requirements for a suit like citing specific federal laws that were violated and didn't say why he believes police broke the California Penal Code that deals with gang activity. He also failed to state any prayers for relief or damages. I mean, it's a pretty short article, man, but you know, it's more of the meaning of the article, like you said, that you know, not often are you gonna see people from rival gangs coming together, even if it's to go against what they feel is police corruption, CDC corruption, you know, or any things that, you know, the administrative or, or the legal people 
try to bestow upon you. You know what I mean? It's, it's that's a trip, man. I wouldn't have thought it would happen, especially. You know, you would think these dudes are active and you would think that they'd have to have certain permissions to do this. But, man, I don't even know, bro. You know, the, the whole claim, though, in general, man, let's just keep it real, man. Um, I don't see this case going anywhere, man. No, you know it's not saying? going to. Not at all. I mean, they consider themselves a businessman. I, I get the whole ideals of trying to work together and, and you know I mean, trying to attack injustices that you feel that the system puts in front of you. Because let's keep it real, man. The, the, you know, we need rules. We need rules of conduct in society. We need laws. Otherwise, it would be anarchy out there on the streets. It would be the wild, wild west. And at times, I, I understand there, there are certain tactics that, you know, the judicial process, the criminal establishment, law enforcement in general, to make it harder on certain individuals. Certain certain uh, cases will bring cer certain sentences that are just way longer than what they should be if you weren't a gang member. So I understand that part, man. But um, so you got to, like I said, my personal opinion of this, man, is you got to pick your battles when you try to set president with the court, you know what I'm saying? You can't just, oh, we're private businessmen. I don't see this case really going anywhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it kind of sounds uh, uh, ludicrous. So you got to put that much time and energy filing a lawsuit and trying to bring it forth through the federal courts. Let's try to find things that are that are nece necessary, you know what I mean? Like, like Todd Asker's case, man. I mean, that was a good win for, good win for them, man, to get out there to the main lines. Regardless, like I said before, I'm gonna reiterate this, whatever their organizational aspirations for being out there in the main line, that's irrelevant. You know what I'm saying? I think that every human being has a right to due process, has a right to the same privileges and incentives if they've been sentenced in the court of law to go to prison. Nobody should be given special treatment based upon any type of uh, affiliation, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, whatever it may be. You, everybody should be entitled to those same rights. And those are the, the, those are the things that if they're going to come together and unify and try to fight the system back on, on certain things that, that are oppressive towards you know certain minorities, certain groups, and so forth, those are the things that, that have to be set forth and pushed forward to fight for. Not that I'm a businessman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, know, try, you know, I mean, how far do you think this is going to go in court? It's not going to go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's, I couldn't personally attach myself in any type of complaint like this because I know we're supposed to stand against the system when you're active and all that. You know what I mean, whether you're active or inactive, you know, you're supposed to stand up for your rights, man. But there comes a time where you have to look at the case and say, man, is this is a previous account. It's not going to go nowhere. You're wasting time. Right. And in doing so, you don't know what the reprisal attacks are going to come from being sentenced while you're being housed. I mean, let's keep it real. Anytime you start to push any type of paper, there's repercussions sometimes. If you have a case that has no merit, right? And you're just being a headache. You know I mean, there's consequences for that. Yeah, and then and you're not the only one that's going to feel them necessarily, man. They might just decide to group, you know, your your particular people in there and, and, and start harassing them too. But, I mean, I get it. They tried, you know what I mean? Maybe they don't have the best legal minds or they don't know the law or whatever the case might be, man. I will applaud them for trying, you know, just – not everybody knows a lot like 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 some of us do that have been back there and studied and studied and studied mandatory studying of it. You know, I, I'll give them I'll give them credit for giving it a shot. You know what I mean? But yeah, I'm I'm in agreement agreement with you, bro. It's it's gonna get knocked out of court. I'm, 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 bro. I'm, I'm gonna give a prime example, right? We had a homeboy, right, that used to do a lot of illegal stuff in corporate street, man. I'm not gonna put his name out there, man, but he was a legal beagle. He was a northerner doing life right you know and, and he pushed paperwork hard man and so he would get certain type of retaliation from staff based upon that man um he wrote a crazy 602 man about the green wall accusing corporate shoe staff of being the green wall you know what i'm saying yeah it, you know i mean and we were told that we had to sign it man you know what i'm saying we ended up signing it, man, and they actually came in with investigators asking us questions. Have we ever seen any 723 or, or green wall? And the only consequences we seen that came forth afterwards was our cells started to get tossed up. You know what I'm saying? We weren't having what we had coming, and staff were looking at us different just because we attached ourselves to, to, you know, it was basically a frivolous, frivolous account, man, because I didn't see any green wall activity. I didn't experience anything. The only thing that they did was is they put a they put a a, a, a lime Kool Aid on his on his bed when he was out the yard, and they put GW on it. 
I mean, that's the only account, man. I mean, you know, for the most part, when I was there, I mean, the staff were pretty much more respectful. They did what they had to do. I mean, there was other places where I've been where staff were trying to torment us. They were trying to press us. They were abusing us. And we had a reason to stand forth and fight, man. But, you know, you got to pick and choose your battles, man, when you fight any type of oppressive tactics that come from the system, man. Because, you know, regardless of what side you're on, man, you know what I'm saying? The system has oppressive individuals who are out to get you. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 relevant. We've all experienced it. You know what I'm saying? In some form or fashion, man. But are we creating it? I mean, are we putting unnecessary obstacles that are going to have a bash like a bash, backlash effect? Is it counterproductive? See, that's a question you have to ask. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I get people trying to assert and fight for the rights. I'm fully supportive of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you have to place limitations on what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like this case right here, kind of, man, we were businessmen. I mean, what, you're admitting that you were selling drugs? You were admitting you were selling guns? And that you have no case against you? It just, it's, it's almost comical, man. Like, I mean, I know you, if you were running a set facility, you, you know what I mean, or, or had any type of authority, man, I don't think that you would give permission to any northerner to be signing that complaint. Or attach their name to it as a plaintiff. It just not not, a, not 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 at all, bro. Not at all, man. Personally, yeah. you know, because basically, I mean, it could be used against you, man. You're admitting that you were business owners and this was your private property. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, tell me how far that's really going to go. You know, what I'm saying, especially against the federal government, man. Let's, you know, what I mean, let's get back to fighting for things that you have. Like as far as like the, like I said, the end to all hostilities, man. Todd Asker, man, he did that, man. Much respect for what he did and what he accomplished. Whatever the ulterior motives were behind it, you know what I'm saying? I'm fully supportive of it. You know what I mean? We was in the shoe for years. We know what it's like to go 35 bucks a month. We know what it's like just to have no sunshine, no yard activities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We know what it's like to not have, not be at a, at a facility to where we can get the proper visits and get a contact visit to hug our people. We know what it's like not to be able to have a conjugal visit or see our kids. You know what I mean? Have some alone time with our wife. We know that. So, you know what I mean? Those are the type of things that are worth fighting for. You know what I'm saying? Obtaining your, your rights, your due process, because prison is a very volatile environment. It's very violent. And so whatever privileges and incentives you can get, you know what I'm saying? You, those are things you need to fight for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's just a prime example. And in reviewing this case, man, I mean, I can't help but laugh a little bit, man. You know what I mean? Much respect for their plight, but at the same time, man, I mean, let's go back to the basics and push something that's necessary, man. Let's look at, into how those search warrants were uh, were acquired. Let's see if there's any illicit activities there. Let's see if there was any uh, uh, suppressions, any motions you could suppress evidence. Let's see if there was any legal technicalities that weren't, you know what I mean, asserted by law enforcement. Those are the things that you need to, to look into. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's where you got to start. You can't start by just coming out with some outrageous argument you know what i mean you gotta look you, first thing you do is look for for violations of, of constitutional law see if your rights were violated then you look at regular you know penal code errors and things of that nature you don't just jump in that i've never i, I can't even believe that they said that to their business man i mean that's crazy bro it's like santa rita right alameda county jail you know saying uh i told people that there was an issue there back in the days because of uh you know, no contact visits with lawyers. They were making you have your lawyer visits over the same phones that they used to visit. Those have the resources to record. Yeah. That should be illegal. Mm -hmm. That should be illicit, man, because you don't know if they're recording your conversations. You should not be put in a position to where you have to have a phone conversation with your attorney and you do not know if it's actually being recorded. The public defenders were doing that all the time, man. And everybody knows that those phones are... are you know what I mean, are capable of recording. Those are the things that are worth fighting for. You know what I mean? Access to your lawyer, access to your rights, access to phone calls like everybody else, man. Just because you're in administration segregation or, or putting in a whole different atmosphere doesn't mean that you can't fight for your rights, man. I mean, these are the things, you know what I mean? Like, neither me or you are, are, are anti-law enforcement. You know what I'm saying? We've said that many, many times that whatever crimes we do, if you back in the days, if you catch me doing it, then I suffer the consequences. You know what I'm saying? But it's the illegal maneuvering it's the oppression of rights. It's it's the ability to try to suppress your voice from being heard and fighting your case and being given access to everything to give yourself the proper due process process and fight for your justice. Those are the things that we stand against.
See the thing, the thing too with the, those phones, I can read them, man. Although they can't use that in court, you know, and as evidence against you, if they overhear something that sparks them to investigate in a different direction, they don't necessarily got to say where it came from. They could be like, well, we, we had this idea that he might be involved and they go talk to that dude, that dude ends up folding all be behind information that was illegally gotten, you know? So whether they can use it or not in court is irrelevant because they can still use it to their advantage without even bringing it up in court. You know what I mean? Yeah, most definitely, man. I mean, times have changed, you know what I mean? This is something that's kind of new. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, there's been rare occasions to where, you know I mean, when we were locked up, we filed some class actions, you know, with the Sureños, you know what I mean, with, with, the, with the Woods and stuff like that, the AB and LLR. I mean, but it was always towards a common good and it always had a purpose and meaning. Um, but never, never, ever since this, this Todd Astro thing, man, said, you know, the Todd Astro set, set everything up, man. It set a precedent for people to sit there and say, look, if we can find forces, we can reattain, we can reobtain the rights that we felt that we lost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, but we can't, we can't have people getting frivolous and, and because the courts don't like that, man. They don't want to have any case in front of them that's like, man, this is BS. I mean, the judge is going to throw it out the door. They want something that's going to have hold merit to where they can sit there and look at avenues because there's judges out there, right? You know what I mean? Especially, especially in, in uh, liberal California, right? Where they want to sit an example that they're the judge that made that change. You know what I'm saying? So those are the type of judges you want to get your case put in front of if you can. Because there's always that judge that wants to leave their trademark and saying, you know what, I created that change for those inmates. I give them those rights. It's not like before years ago where they were just trying to throw the book at you and they didn't even want to see your case. Now you have a lot of action, man, but you got to pursue things that, that are beneficial and that hold merit, man. Not something that's watered down, sugar-coated, that just really isn't going to go anywhere, man, because otherwise it's just a waste of time, man. You know, you're, you're taking your revolutionary plight in the wrong direction. No, no doubt. Do you think, uh, in your opinion, what do you think they're both groups, other homies are going to feel about them teaming up on this lawsuit if it was done just, you know, based on what a few dudes in that particular jail thought? Well, it's, it's Contra Costa County. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how much of a, of a straw of any, any influential MA members or comrades are there, first and foremost. I don't know how, how influential of any NF or even bros are there. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you get young people who, who are, are are pulled at a young age, man. And, you know, we're taught, man, to stand against the system. We're taught not to stand against the system, but to fight for your rights, man. Do everything left because everything that's to the right is always stands against you. So you may have a young insulado who just got his status, got some training. And, um, you know, I was one of those when I was young in my career. You know what I mean? Like, I was fighting the system over, over everything. I was I was reading certain things, you know what I mean, against the government and all that, man, because I, I had yet to understand the organizational philosophies of this were pro-capitalism. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I was adapting to certain things in my teaching and schooling at a young age because I was just pushing that in our movement, you know what I mean, for the betterment of the people, for our rights. So I think you may have some people who are incompetent that maybe don't understand what pursuing a proper plight is, you know what I mean, to fight for rights, you know what I'm saying? And therefore, I don't know if, if you guys, I don't see any big homie sanctioning that for sure. You know what I mean, I don't see any carnalis because I know you, you, I know you, I know me. If we seen it, we'd be like, come on, man. We're not, we, I mean, we're not going to get behind this. You know I mean, you're admitting that you're basically admitting that you were involved in criminal activities, that you were a businessman. You know what I mean, that could be used against you if you have any appeal action in your, in your case in the future. Yeah. Admitting that you use that house as a place to do it too, even if they weren't trying to get you for using a residence as a place to distribute and all that kind of shit. Man. I want to know who put this in this person's head, man. I mean, you, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, maybe, maybe he got some, maybe he got, maybe he got a, a, a plug in there, man, with some good stuff, man. And he's been up for days. He, he wrote the whole thing out, bro, because, you know, that's the first thing I take back. Like I said, man, you know, it, it's all about doing things appropriately, man, and, and having something that you know that you have a chance to, to especially with, with nowadays, you got a lot of, a lot of young lawyers and they want to do proactive, they want to be proactive and show activism out in the streets and, uh, prison reform and all that, man, which is a positive thing, man, because, you know, where, where the prisons are today compared with when we were there, we didn't have that as much, man. If you file a 602 or a class action, it wasn't even getting heard, man. You were lucky to get it to the third level. Your 602 would just disappear. Now they can't do that, man. So for those who are behind the walls, whether they're active or inactive, you know what I mean? You know, pushing for the rights, you know, it affects every inmate. It affects the ones that are active, inactive, anybody. So you got to bring cases that, that, the whole merit, you know what I'm saying? That's the only 
that's the only message I have to push on this, on this whole co topic. Yeah, even when when my one appeal about my validation reached Sacramento, it got shot down. Then I paroled in like less than a month after that anyway, so it wasn't no big deal. But they, they shot me down in cold blood at every level, even though my validation was totally fictitious. You know what I mean? I've mentioned that a few times. But uh, yeah, you got you to gotta pick and choose your battles. You know what I mean? But I, like I said, I give them props for giving it a shot. You know, they were they were probably trying to do what they were told to do, you know, or, or thought their schooling was, you know what I mean? And I don't see them getting in any trouble by their homeboys. They, you can't get in trouble with the homeboys unless, you know, you, you say something too outlandish. See, that's the problem with everything, right? To file any type of motions, you have to bring it before federal court. You had to exhaust all state remedies unless it was yeah. a federal case. It had anything to do with any type of uh, uh, California Department of Corrections or anything that was state. Bay State Rand, you'd have to exhaust all state remedies, so you'd have to go through the 602 process. Yeah, and that could take up to a year, a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, they'll use every single day, too. You know, and, or you can go directly to the courts, and that's even a longer process. Sometimes that 602 would be the avenue that you were supposed to take to get this to where you could take it to federal court because yeah. state courts they're going to shut you down every time, you know. So that was the whole thing about our appeal process, even in the county jail, we used to write appeals, they would disappear. You know what I mean? And they would give you limited space to put your attachments and then they would just sign it over. You would be lucky to get it back. Next thing you know, you're, you're doing an Olson review and you find your 602 in there that you filed a year ago. You were wondering what happened to it. They never gave it to you. Yeah, no, it happens. I tell you what, every 602 that I ever remember filing in my whole life, bro, was uh, it was to the exact day of the limitations that they had to answer it. You know, if they had 90 days at this stage, it was 90 days that I got it back. If it was 30, it was 30, bro. They, they're, they're slow playing that stuff intentionally, you know what I mean? Since we're on, since we're on the topic, right, um, talking about injustices and all that and, and, and um, you know, criminal reform, prison reform, I heard that now, I don't know if this is 100% true, but an inmate that's locked up in, in, in uh, Kern, Kern Valley stated that now they're using um, body cameras, all correctional officers. What do you think yeah. about that? Um, that'll end the a lot of bad things for inmates, but it'll also end a lot of wiggling out of potential problems, man, when they have it on camera, you know? That's why I was thinking the same thing, man. If you want potential cell moves, you want this move from here to there. I mean, whatever perks that you may be able to get a correctional officer to do for you, man, it's going to put those limitations now. It's going to protect certain people, man. But I mean... More, you know, I mean, most of the time, the things I experienced now when it came to, to uh, uh, correctional abuse and police abuse behind the wall, uh, physical abuse, it wasn't just done just to any inmate. It was usually done to those who got out of line. Not saying it was right, it's always wrong. Any type, anytime you, you abuse your authority or your position and you take actions into your own hands, but, you know, I, I experienced some type of oppression and abuse when I was there. I talk about when I was putting the case, uh, management cell, man, and that should never happen. You know I mean? They viol violated my rights, man. So it's a catch-22 situation for me. You know what I mean? I would rather be able to wiggle, you know what I'm saying, uh, be able to get certain perks, certain things that may be, may be of interest to the household, as opposed to worrying about what's going to happen to someone down the line. You know what I mean? You know, We're in a different that, era, too, man. Our, our era was, was, was way different, man. Nowadays, you know, there's a little bit softer approach to crime and justice and all that kind of stuff than when we were there. When we were there, it was more like just a straight up middle finger, you know? <laughs> was, yeah, man. We didn't, we didn't have people, you know, I mean, you'd have the death penalty people that protested the death penalty, you know, all the time. But as far as just day-to-day -day rights, man, you, you, you were kind of on your own to, to win that battle, you know? Yeah, you didn't. Yeah, I mean, you weren't even allowed to talk to really any correctional officers, man. I mean, unless you knew one that was kind of cool that gave you, gave you. Clinton, we had a lot of them under pocket though back in the days, bro. I'm not gonna oh, lie. Wow. Man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it depends what set facility you're at, man. So we'll see where this goes. You know what I mean? Anyways, this is just a quick spill, man. It's just something that we just came across. It's a very new article, new class action that was filed, man. And we figured we'd give you guys something a little bit different, open up for discussions, a little dialogue. I should say we we have a different perspective of it, um, different views. Um but, you know, anytime you're, you're searching for your rights, it's always a good thing. But let's make sure that we're not doing frivolous things, man, to bring change. No doubt. All right, you too, man. It's your boy Rojo Flacco. We're out of here.